The title for week five is How Can We Scale from Local to Global to Local? A bit wordy, but what it really means is how can we look at the bigger picture and use what we've learned to apply it back to our local community? Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Hannigan, and I'm the Dean for the School for the Environment at UMass Boston. My work focuses on paleo-environmental reconstruction, which is a mouthful, but basically means that I study past climate to understand our future climate. Although this course focuses mostly on local communities, we also need to look at the larger picture. In doing so, we gain more knowledge about the interconnectedness between natural and human systems and a better understanding of how our local community works and depends on global changes and vice versa. The first lesson, presented by Dennis Bertuna, our course teaching assistant, will address the topic of weather. Weather is a perfect example of scaling between local to global to local, as it's driven by temporal and spatial scales. We all think we know what weather is, but how does it change and what drives these changes? Across the globe, we see weather affecting local communities, like in isolated thunderstorms. But we can also see how weather works at larger scales, like in hurricanes and tornadoes. Temporarily, a weather event can be rather quick, but can also be drawn out as a year-long drought. So as you can see, weather plays a big role in both our local and our global communities. The second lesson will be presented by Chris Watson, a research assistant at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. He will specifically address the impacts that climate change and sea level rise will have on the city of Boston. We've all had our various degrees of exposure to the topic of climate change and its global effects, but it's interesting to see the effects in a specific location. Another great example from local to global to local, as we're all connected. The lab activities for this week will address some of the key concepts of weather, air mass, water vapor, air pressure and temperature, and cloud formation. We want you to be able to gain a better understanding of the processes and concepts that dictate what weather is occurring near your home. One more week to go after this. As always, let us know what you think and keep in touch on the discussion board. Cheers.